Did you see that Don Murray presented Michel with an award last week for this performance? And, and he's the last living Marilyn co-star. Oh, and really he apparently, nice. and I mean, I wasn't there, but apparently he really uh, was impressed and said oh. she nailed it. So that was really exciting. Yes, and, uh, and she actually did sing. Right? Totally. Michelle yeah. did her own singing? Totally. Wow. I mean, she, I mean you know, I, I always wanted her to play this part, and, you know, she was so brilliant from start to finish, but... I didn't know also what a brilliant singer she was. So that was something you know, we discovered while we were going along. And you know, her voice was fantastic. So uh, you know, the more songs, the better. But you know, I hope you can tell, I mean, I just, you know, I, it was a total thrill for, for me as a director to be able to watch that performance evolve as we went along you know, on a daily basis to see her becoming Marilyn. And not only becoming Marilyn, but becoming Marilyn, such a textured, uh, skillful, sensitive way, do you know, a human way. Gentlemen, it is my special pleasure to introduce a woman who clearly needs no introduction. A very great actress on her first trip to London. Carolyn, is it true you wear nothing in bed but perfume? Oh. Darling, as I'm in England, let's say I sleep in nothing but Yardley's lavender. <laughs> One thing that really helped us all was that it isn't a biopic, it's not the whole life story. That sort of feels that the life stories, um, you know, the audience are sort of tiring a bit of, oh, the unknown who gets lucky, mm -hmm. has success, struggles with success, blah, blah, blah. But what really appealed to us was that this was just, you know, this moment in time where uh, it was a very particular moment in Marilyn's life. Um, and... You know, we were able, hopefully, to tell the, the life story from this very particular moment in her life. When I was coming into the theater last night, uh, someone had walked up to the little teenage, you know, ticket taker, and he said, is that the Marilyn Monroe movie? And she said, oh, is that her last name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. Yeah, because I mean, that's interesting what you say, because... Yeah, for a lot of people, everyone's heard of Marilyn. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the face, but they don't really know the performances that much. Do you know what I mean? A lot of young people haven't seen the movies. Uh, so, you know, uh, th 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 we're, you know the, the three-dimensional living and breathing Marilyn is quite new to a lot of people who've mm -hmm. only ever seen her poster on a wall or, you know, the Andy Warhol Marilyn. Did you consult with the family of uh, Colin Clark before uh, casting or...? No, not. I mean, they are very supportive of us, um, uh, uh, and that house, Saltwood Castle, the, the family still live in, um, uh, and uh, they were on the set and really were uh, very excited to see Eddie. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like consulting them, but you know, I'm very pleased to have their support. Very grateful for their support. Is and they so they sh we showed it to them for the first time only last week, actually. And they seem to like it. Was there anything in the movie that you would have liked to have kept that you had cut off? Do you mean, did I cut anything I wish I hadn't cut? No. How much was left out of the film? Uh, from what? From the book. Um, I don't really remember now because you know, <laughs> it starts as a book, then it becomes a script, then it becomes something we shoot, right. and then it becomes something we edit. I mean, I'm not trying to be glib about it. Um, essentially, we are telling... Well, it's the two books, actually. It's okay. the first diary and then the second book, My Week with Marilyn, and we sort of combined them together. Um, and our job was to tell Colin's version of this right. story. Um, uh, but, I mean, I, honestly, you know, things evolved, you know what I mean? Right. And lines get cut and whatever. And it is a sort of love letter to the magic of cinema uh, and a sort of love letter to the specialness of actors, you know, mm -hmm. the courage and the... Uh, you know the, the talent of actors and that that appealed to me and so that really was my starting point falling in love with these books rather than it being a Marilyn story do you mm -hmm. know what I mean and but obviously it becomes a Marilyn story but that wasn't you know the the first attraction but uh you know I, I'm fully aware that had Michelle not had the courage to, to sign on we would have had no film and you know as I, I just repeat what I say you know that seeing her um you know become this character was truly thrilling and 
you know, the fact that people seem to be uh, liking it so much is even more thrilling, actually. Did you have to pack her costumes to make her look There was all kinds of choice. cinema magic. <laughs> <laughs> <you know? laughs> some of which I knew about and some of which I didn't. You know? but, uh, but, uh, well, they do that all the time anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah but she, um, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, and we had Jenny Shirkle, this magnificent, uh, very experienced uh, makeup designer who worked very closely with Michelle and who's was a very sort of brilliant woman in her own right. And uh, so, you know, there was a big team around us all. Um, you know, all part of it. And it was funny because whenever Marilyn came on the set, which was most days, you know, there was a sort of, we, I used to call it some Marilyn madness because everybody, <laughs> makeup, costume, uh, DP, me, Michelle, everyone sort of went into a sort of frenzy, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, because we knew we had to deliver, you know, and you know, thank God for Michelle's sort of focus and concentration because, um, you know, she, uh, you know, was able to sort of cut through all of that and just focus on what the scene was about and what, the requirement of that day was, you know. So, yeah, I was, yeah, I always knew I was lucky to get her, but I didn't know how lucky I was. And was Kenneth Branagh always the idea for Lawrence Olivier? He was because, you know, as you know, his name has been associated with Olivier's all the way through, <laughs> and because he was uh, doing post production on Thor, the mm -hmm. film he directed, whilst we were doing it. So initially, he wasn't available, uh, but then date shifted, and suddenly he became available, and so that was, you know, equally thrilling, frankly, because. Uh, he just brings such, I mean, amazing experience. He's just a great actor, and just this intelligence. So his notes on the script and uh, his understanding and empathy for the agony and ecstasy of being a director and a director who <laughs> directs himself. You know, it, it just was so right. You know, and uh, I, I, I just love the comedy he brings to Olivier. But uh, but there's also a sense of um, again. The warmth and the sympathy for the man. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I, I'm just uh, astonished by that performance. And it actually started Olivier's new career too. He did. Well, go this didn't. But the, I mean, the next. He yes. Did, he then yeah. did go after the. Yeah. The raw. Yeah, yeah and I think that was Miller's influence <laughs> in getting him to take John Osborne and look back in anger in the Royal Court Theatre seriously, mm -hmm. and that did rejuvenate his career in the way he thought Prince and the Showgirl and working with Marilyn was going to. Talk to anybody who had done the Prince and the Showgirls or anybody? There's, well, there's, I mean, I'm, I, I really regret not talking to Jack Cardiff before he passed away because he did live till quite recently and you know, he was the DP and had a special, uh, affectionate relationship with Marilyn. But I, 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 wait, I wasted that opportunity. But we did talk to Elaine, who was the continuity, did the continuity on it. And uh, she saw the film last week, which is great. And you know, she was 30 in 1956, as was Marilyn. And, I asked her what Marilyn was like, she said she was like a little girl. And you, know, you can't help but feel the sort of, um, you know, the fate of our lives, you know, that two, these two women were both 30 in 1956 and one must have lived a few years and one is still alive more than 50 years later. You know, it's, it's, it's strange to think, isn't it? Uh, Vivian Lee too was just absolutely perfect also. Yeah, but that's a really, really important, I was lucky to get Julia because, you know, it's tough getting uh, you know, they're such iconic parts, but, you know, comparatively small parts. But she just brings an empathy and an understanding to that. And it's a really important um, element to the film, the Vivian Lee theme, because she had so recently been hailed as the most beautiful woman in the history of the world, <laughs> Vivian Lee Scarlett O'Hara. And they're still beautiful at 43. She's being made to feel like she's past it and an old has-been, you know? Right. And, you know, I like to think that, you know, should Marilyn have lived till she was 43, you know, she may have felt the same, you know. So that, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, that thing about how ephemeral it is, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, you don't know how much of Marilyn's mystique and allure is, in fact, uh, you know, the sad early, her, her sad... Has said early demise. You expecting an Oscar nomination? I, I, I don't know about anything like that. <laughs> but, um, I, 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 I just the thing I, I would say to that is, you know, I, I'm a fan of actors, and I'm so grateful I got this cast to do this. And the fact that people seem to be liking their work makes me hope they get the recognition they deserve. You could quit this. Forget Marilyn Monroe. Forget Hollywood. But let it all go.
first love is such sweet despair, Colin. Shall I be her? Who? Marilyn. <laughs>